Hi, I'm Rob from Hobbsy. Thanks for joining me live on YouTube. Sorry, I'm a little bit late. I'm just getting my little lad to bed. Um, so we'll just take it steady the first like five minutes or something. I'm just getting my head back into being <laughs> the idea of putting myself here on YouTube. Right, so um, yeah, I don't know if it's just actually just, it just kicked off. All right, hey, I'm Rob from Hobbsy. Thanks for joining me live here on, on the YouTubes. Oh, yes. It's all the rage, this live thing, isn't it, these days? I just felt like it. I've not done a, done a live thing uh, on my own for ages. I used to do it on Periscope, like, every Friday. But it's a bit of a new thing for me, I guess. Uh, but, I mean, yeah, they have a better to do. So I thought I'd yammer on for a bit, as long as I can manage to um, talk to myself, um, about a brewery called Almasty from Newcastle. As I said, I've just put my little lad to bed. I'm still... Getting on the level. I might have to drink some beer to to get back to the, the state of mind where I can be relatively entertaining. So, uh, and I'll give you a bit more spiel about Alma's Day, my kind of um, uh, opinions on them and, and kind of like um, my kind of connection to Alma. Oh, not a connection, but you I mean I've got to get to know about them and stuff like that in a while. But I'll tell you the beers that I'm going to be troughing on this evening. Will I drink them all? I don't know. Depends how many comments I get. So... Um, the first one I'm going to be drinking is so I, I wanted to get their their core range, which is I've got two of them. The the, the other one had sold out sadly, so but I wanted to do that. But uh, I can't even remember what the green one is. I think it's just another pale, isn't it? So I do have a second pale, but the first one, yes, yeah, so, is, is, is there a name for it? There's a name. For it. Oh, there. Okay, so it's called Simple Pleasures. It's Pow Isle, four uh, percent. Uh, Hop and haze. That's what you like. Um, we'll give you. We'll go through a bit more spiel as we go on. Because that will be the first one I'm supping. And the next one is uh, one of their kind of ale exploration kind of like range. So this is like their kind of their uh, uh, one-offs and kind of seasonals and stuff. So that is, um, uh, I guess, a range they're doing, which is single strain DDH pale at four percent. And I think that's I think that's Citra that one. And then the last of the lot is called. Believe IPA. I drank quite a bit of this on cask a couple of weeks ago up in Newcastle. So, and that is, yes, yeah, so that's 6% IPA called Believe. Right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put these back in the fridge in a minute, but I'm going to drink a bit of that one just for starters. And as it happens, as it happens, I do have an Almasty glass, which I bought um, when I went up to their birthday a couple of years ago. Oh, I'm knackered, I tell you. How are you doing? I was, I'll, um, there we go. First comment of the night, all right. Beer hounds, beer reviews. Cheers from OC California. All right. I think I, um, um, it's one place I didn't get to when I was in California. I went to San Diego, a couple of places in San Diego, and then San Francisco. Oh, uh, uh, well, in Oakland. So, pour that like a, like an Adam, um, like an Adam Johnson. M minor dickhead pour, uh, not bad pour. It is a, Perfect pure white head. I mean, it's a great looking beer actually. Pretty damn hazy for uh, for this. It's not as turbid as it looks on the camera because my I think my my lighting's a bit whoo, a bit unflattering at it for this time now. Maybe we'll put some put on some mood lighting later. Um, but yeah, pretty pretty murky. It's not kind of like big and chunky and turbid or anything like that. But a pale kind of sandy grayish kind of like beer. One thing I will say though. Um, if anybody from Almasty just happens to watch this, I'll, I'll I'll check later on as well. If they are, you're welcome to jump on. I'll send you. I'll, I can send you the link somewhat on Instagram, and um, you're, you're very much welcome to jump on this um, shit show and make me. I'm, I'm not going to try and come off that. I'm not going all James Marshall. I mean, you know, he's got his. He does his research. I'm not going to. Not going to pretend that I, I've done any research. But I will give you my personal kind of interactions with. Um, and there we um, Oh, there we go. Lots of beer breweries here in the OC. Yeah, well, will be. California, isn't it? A lot of beer. Anyway, I'll get to Rome in a minute. I just want to have a drink. Is that all right? I mean, you're, you lot are already probably drinking. I'm, I'm dealing with an excitable five-year-old. Anyway, cheers. We'll get on to the slightly more formal element of the, the tasting in a minute. Mm -mm -mm. Sometimes you just, uh, you just have to... Sorry, I've just seen a comment that I'll put up. Um... Sometimes you just got to drink some beer, aren't you? Just stop talking. But then that won't be a very entertaining stream. And we've got our lovely Jake. Jake O'Bear says, Evening, where the other two handsome devils you normally do live shows with. Well, 
don't know. They're usually, they're usually busy at this time of night. They're usually not available until, until later. But I mean, I'm more than welcome to jump on somewhere after I've finished this shit show. Let's see, this is the challenge. Simon gets hundreds of people watching him and he can't keep up with comments. I'm just not as popular. But I'm okay with that. I'm okay about that. Okay about that. Right then. That's lovely. Mm -mm. So you want the kind of the the, the, the nonsense that you, I am known and, and loved for clearly by six people anyway. So yeah, we did we, we did the colour, we did the appearance. But I mean, if you're going all that kind of um, going full on BJCP judge, not done it. I've judged, I've judged, judged for camera. Um, on a national level and for Sebra as well in, in the finals. So I have done it, but I've just not qualified in any shape or form. But um, one thing I like about this, it's 4%. It, it tastes, it's not got one of those things which are a bit, you know, that sometimes lower ABV beers with a lot of hops. It can be a bit like hot tea and a bit of an al alka seltzer kind of thing going on. This doesn't. This has got a lot going for it. The plan for this, anyway, this evening, is for me to um, kind of elaborate a little bit on. I mean, not obviously, you used to, my video has been about four minutes long, but um, I'm going to do something a little bit longer, a um, bit more that kind of yeah, drink the breadth of the drink and how your your kind of experience changes as you go along. But what, because for me, I guess my reviews are more kind of first impressions more than anything. And then sometimes you, I, I go and go away and regret it. But then sometimes, sometimes you fucking nail it. Oh, yeah. So it's got a decent amount of body for a 4% beer. Loads of flavour, though. And I'd say at this stage, it's kind of sherbet lemons, grapefruit, grapefruit flesh. There's a, quite a pronounced pithy note in there. Maybe lime, but it's definitely lemon-lime grapefruit. It's quite sharp. It's floral. Yeah. Yeah, I, I kind of don't want these to get too cold, so I might piss off. I mean, you people who are a lot more experienced at doing this on a weekly basis, they just go for a piss for about four minutes, don't they? <laughs> Right, I'll be back in a bit. You just sat there. Come on. <laughs> but I'll just I'm just gonna piss in the bucket at the side. I'm not really. No. I'll just I'll just hold on. I'll try. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, I think it's a great beer. If it's ABV, it's it's nuts. So my eyes aren't great in terrible lighting, so simple pleasures. We're all like simple pressures. Uh, it's a session strength, grapefruit and tropical fruit flavour bomb. Yeah. Not far off what I was saying. I wouldn't say tropical, but yeah. One of our modern hazy pails that showcases a trademark style. Almost is focused on contemporary ales that push flavours to the fore. Explore more at almostdo.co.uk. We and we'll do all that. We're gonna do all that because I've got a I've got a plan that I kind of like cobbled together at the last minute when I decided to do this and then realised. My son might not want to go exactly to sleep at exactly the time I would have liked him to. Um, but, 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 you don't, so you don't get any more details about that. You don't get anything about recipe or anything like that. Light off. There you go. <coughs> so it's quite simple. But really nicely put together. So, yeah, so Almisty are based in... I'm really going to have to... Try my best not to um, do a bad Geordie accent because my Geordie accent's very offensive. <laughs> but where exactly are these buggers? Because they moved. I, when I went to see them a couple of years ago for their birthday, which when I got this, because that was part of the deal, we, you paid um, X amount to get in, got some tokens, and you got a glass. And it's a lovely glass. I, I, at the time, I was disappointed that I couldn't get the Imperial Stout. They had a, um, a vanilla Imperial Stout, which I would have loved. Um, but I'm going to do a little, little, little of the old um, screen share because that's what all these, the good ones, on YouTube 
people love a bit of screen sharing. Um, share audio. No, don't you want to hear me? Don't you? naturally. <laughs> so here we go. Here we go. Stop screen. No, that, no that's what I want. On all oh, whole screen. Boom. And then we go up to there. Here we go. Here we go. So contact page, the, the, the least interesting page of any brewery's website. But the important bit, important bit, where the bloody hell is it? So I was made aware that they would um, they were kind of near where Anarchy now are, which is a bit out of town. So, oh God, I've stopped myself saying offensive Newcastle. You kind of, see, I think that was it. It's Mer Merton, I think that's the kind of area where where are the old um, where Anarchy are as well. So here we go, here we go. Right, so if you want a bit of context... Jesman, that's where posh that's where posh bohemian types live. And and I think is this Town Moor? No, that's not it. Oh yes, so this is where this is where that is where Wylam is. If you have a bit of Wylam up in Newcastle, which is top top end of town. Top end of city. That's me just generic Yorkshire accent, so it's not offensive York. It's taking a lot of willpower not to do a terrible um um Geordie accent. So there you go. So it's St James's Park University. So and the train station down there. So there, that's your that's your kind of main kind of like part of Newcastle. So it's a bit it's a fair whack out. So you get on the coast road, you go down there, don't you? As far as you can bear to go past the B and Q. Oh, more Jews there. So there's a lot of breweries in New in Newcastle. Where have they gone? Oh, it's up here, isn't it? So it's up there in Merton Village. Yeah, when I went went and seen before, they were they were fucking miles away. It took me a long time to get there, and it was a really hot summer's day to, on their birthday, which was a great day, which I will talk about later. But I want to want to cover the original, the kind of essential stuff, don't you? So there you go. That's where they are in relation to the um, the centre of. So look, there's bloody look. Who was Burn Valley Brewery? I never knew about that. I've been I were up in Newcastle a couple of weeks ago. Newcastle Brewing Limited. Is that as in Newcastle Brown Ale? I don't know. Who the bloody hell are they? Who's Burn Valley Brewery? No, 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 no. I mean, there's loads of places. So I thought they'd move down here. This is a, uh, uh, this is kind of Who's Burn. This is a, a bit of a hotbed for. Where well, is this biker? <laughs> who was that? Um, so this is biker, as obviously for people of a certain age will know. It's biker Grove. Oh yes, the very same, which is a lovely part of the city. And some great, great place around here. Free trade in, which you, where you, I think you will usually find some, uh, some free trade beers on. I think you can drink up at the brewery, but not at the moment due to the global bastard. But there's loads of other places around here. There's like the Time Bank there, and there's uh, and Full Circle are quite near where, which I did go to. Brinkburn, once again, close by. I think Northern Alchemy is quite near there as well. So there's plenty to go. I, I love Newcastle as a place, just in general. So there you go. That is the context. So I've got here, untapped once again. So the tropes. I've learned well off Craig, Craig Samuels. I've learned well. So let's have a look on untapped and potentially ridicule people for their poor decisions. Because that's, that's not on. <coughs> well, I, um, the Amnesty are better than a 3.74. Brewery, pish posh. We'll, we'll get into that in a bit. I don't know if you've ever been aware of this. All their pump clips are a little, little slice of a bit of timber. We've still with the bark on. It's nice. It's nice branding. I don't really understand what it is, but I don't know what they're trying to do because they've got these little trees on. But they seem to be getting away from that. But I said I'm a fan. So, what did I say this is called? Simple pleasures. Right, let's find this then. And see what the universe thought of this. There is simple pleasures. American pale ale, four percent. Blah blah blah. You know all that. Oh, that's pretty, for four percent. Uh, three point nine one. And I would imagine that's a lot to do with the amount of this that's been sucked on cask, because I'm sure it is absolutely lovely. Cask is. Oh, that's just. Oh, oh, this is interesting. If this is still relevant, session strength, grapefruit, and tropical. You got that. 
beautifully balanced daily drinker, packed full of aroma flavor, premium flavor. This from Falconer's Flight and Mosaic. Mm. No, my mate Harry is a bit of a. He used to always bang on about Falconer's Flight. So, um, but yeah, it was Falconer's Flight and Mosaic. I'm not. I couldn't tell you what Falconer's Flight tastes like. I don't think I'm getting any mo much Mosaic. But you I mean. It's one of those beers, isn't it? You're not going to be... It's not like a massive showcase of a specific hop. It's a, it's, a, it's a session ale, which I hate the term session, which I'll get on. I'll, if I, when I, Maybe later on when I've had them all, you're going to get the full, kind of like my irritation of the term session. So, um, and, Andrew T. Gear 4, good on you. From a can. When was that then, lad? Who was that? 38 minutes ago. Well, well, cheers to Andrew T. You'll never see this. Well, maybe we will, but if he does, well, cheers. Pete, 3.25, yeah, whatever. Oh, Richard M. Look at Richard M. He's loving it. 4.25. Cracking bitter pale ale. Oh, yes. Absolutely. Oh, come on. Terry M. He's got the full five. Too bloody right. I think it's a great beer. Ah, good. A comment. I'm all about the comments. Darren R. Managed to fill a pint glass with a 440. Skills. Tasted great. Ovs. Always does. Like a cloud. Smiley face. Get a four and a half. Yeah, absolutely. It's a great beer. Andy J. 3.75. Good number. Come on. We're all about the comments. And please in enjoy the photographs for what they are worth. Another four. See, it's the good ratings. Andy Jay's had another. See, it's pretty consistent for this kind of beer. I think it's, I think it's a, and these these are most mostly cans. Obviously, as of as of late, that's what you'll have been drinking. He's he's got a Wylam glass. I've got an Almsty glass. More points for me. Yeah. Crowning, where's that? Yeah, so it's all, everything is, it's all really high ratings. Andrew T, once again, is loving it. I didn't look how many ratings, but every, it's right up there. Oh, he's got the glass. There's Andy, there's David A. David A. He's the first David of the alphabet. Um, Pleasant starter. Well, quite. Absolutely. But yeah, I almost make the best session sessionable hazy IPA. So it's not an IPA. It's a pale ale. <laughs> Session IPA can get in the sea, if you ask me. Near thing, near um South Shields, get in the sea down there. Not too far. Um uh, juicy fruity juicy fruity session IPA. It's not a session IPA, it's pale ale. Session IPA is dog shit. Session IPAs for me are just a bit. <sighs> The malt character is lacking, and it's just a bit near. So I'm not one to go for a session IPA, but I like a pale ale. She'll be she'll be happy about that picture. Well, um, well, the friend of Adam, just Adam, who gave it a three and a half, which I think was a bit tight. Cool shit, beard. That sounds posh, doesn't it? Talking to his mum on um, looks like I'm going to say his mum. <laughs> He's talking to his mum on um, on Zoom, probably. That's what the trendy kids. It's all about StreamYard. Remember that. That's what all the pros use. <laughs> um, and she'll be happy about that. And it looks like she's having. Some, well, she's drinking out of a brew dog glass. You know what? Adam's mum was for. Well, that's a nice picture, isn't it? Verdant glass there. Get a real one, and pay for it, you shitters. But yeah, so you get the kind of general jest. It's popular, isn't it? No one's saying this is a bad beer at all. Because you know what? It's not. It's bloody lovely. Anyway, big thanks to everybody for who's tuned in. I really appreciate it. Got a couple more comments. Our lovely, lovely Craig. Kemp Beer Reviews. Cheers, Rob. Cheers, Craig. And and Davo, a regular on these on these YouTube streams. So hi right, Davo, how are you doing? Mm. That's that's this is rapidly rapidly disappearing. Uh, I'd say one thing I'd say about um People have tuned out now. You can see my face again. I should just leave the internet up. People like live internet browsing. Maybe you could make something out of that. Have, have I had any likes? I've, I mean, as I'm, I'm new to all this, so 
don't understand all that. Come on, give us ten likes. Yeah, I'm not taking the piss. I'm just, I'm just curious. Um, but yeah, oh, we've got oh, it's another one here. Got another one here from my lovely Jake. It says, uh, nice to see a lower ABV beer. Get a decent score. I agree, absolutely untapped. Normally favours the silly ABV stuff. Yes, as did the, all the other ones like Beer Advocate and um, and um, Rate Beer. I always felt it was nothing like this would ever get a fair shake. If you looked on Rate Beer, I bet it's not a great rating. I guess it, 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 people are doing it for different reasons. I think Rate Beer, it's a real train spot. I'm not mean, I'm not being insulting. It's just a bit of a train spot's approach to that kind of thing. Untapped, you'll just do it as you're drinking. I think it can be a lot more kind of casual um, i personally use it once in a while I use it as a tool to find out where beers are on so when i'm out and about in places it, while i'm not while i'm still sober enough to give a toss i'll um i'll use them because i think i think it's personal responsibility to be like oh well i've come here because i i knew that one on so i'm gonna check this one in so that other person could go oh they've put that on great i didn't know that was on i'll go to that pub so I've, I've I've got a lot I've got a lot of time for untapped, but I remember <coughs> being in L London one time with Peter the Master of Hoppets and Jakob the Lord of Mugs, and he um and there's a photograph of, of of three of us just like checking in in, the, in Market Porter in London. You're thinking maybe it's a breakdown of a social dynamic going on here, and let's not do it quite as much. But I think it's an in, I think it's a useful tool. Is untapped. And a better piece of software than the uh, the NHS's um, track and trace. So I'll stand by that comment. Because it's dog shit. <laughs> if, if it's anything to go by, the track and trace knows I've been in the Triangle in Shipley, which is my local bottle shop. Beer shop, I guess. Not many bottles these days. Um, North Brewing in Leeds. Al um, Bush Place in Newcastle. Nomadic in Leeds. Brewdog in Leeds, North Bar in Leeds, Assembly Underground in Leeds. That's probably the only places that I've had to check in. So, But on top of that, I only really go to Aldi on top of that anyway, so probably quite accurate information. Maybe I'm just... need to broaden my horizons. <laughs> yeah, so this is, this is a, a lovely, lovely beer. Yeah, so... And I guess it's quite relevant at this point that um, I'm quite I'm familiar with Almsteer as a Cascale brewery, and until really recently, they were really hard to get hold of. I think they they pretty much serviced their local area, and um, and that was about it. So you got it in a few places. There, there's a well, I'm going to say there was because it's it's a shadow of its former self, different owners. Um, but the the Sparrow in Bradford, I think, has had them on. I think that might be one of the first places I saw it. Maybe the Grove in Huddersfield, I might have seen them in there, but uh, maybe Port Street Beer House in Manchester. But I didn't see them that often, but definitely you'd see them more often if you were going up into the Newcastle area. And I think in the last year, or maybe like the last year or so, maybe six months, it's changed quite considerably. Because I guess, and a lot of brewers have to do this, you've got to, you've got to change your, your model a little bit, haven't you? Because these guys would have... Been really quite cask heavy, I'd imagine. I've never seen any of their beer on on keg, actually. In Newcastle, I've been into Newcastle three times this year. I love Newcastle. I think it's a great place. I like the people. I am infinitely entertained by their accent just because it's wonderful and it's lovely and it's really characterful. As a Yorkshireman, I appreciate that. And also, I like to do a really bad and offensive <laughs> Jordy accent as well, which I'll probably do a lot at the end, I'd imagine. So I'm doing quite well. No, 25 minutes in, one beer. That's, I can yammer on for no good reason. But I guess so. In recent memory, where I'd been drinking it. So on the last trip, I had a fair bit of it. We had uh, went first pub we went to. Got another comment from Davor actually says Jay, agree with you. Say that most people don't understand styles in the right way. Therefore. Poor scores, low ABV business. Yeah, yeah, I think Lag is a real kind of victim of that. Not that I'm one of those Lager people. Not trendy enough. <laughs> so I'd say, so once again, I'll, I'll mention this a few times. If anybody from Almost is on, feel free to 
tell me and then you can jump on. I will welcome you with open arms. You can entertain my my viewers. That'd be great. But if you don't, watch this after the fact and ace beers, thanks. Um, yeah, so last time, first pub we went into, we, so we were there on a Friday and Saturday. And <coughs> we went, first pub we went to was called Lady Grey's, which is owned by the same people who've got this place near the station, which is a bit shit, the place near the station. And we'd been to Lady Grey's the, the previous visit, which was in September, but that was a Tuesday and a Wednesday. Not the best time to visit, go and drink beer, but we still had a good time. Um, and that was, and it was shit first time, to be honest. And they were now on, but I did have an Almasty my first time, actually. And, but it was, everything else went on. It was really disappointing. But then it was a Blackberry Saison. Which I'm not going to go for Saison's very often, but on cask. I'd be like, mm, oh, go on, it's local. Yeah, I like Almost. Let's have some of that. We had a, and then we had a can of the Believe later on in the uh, later on in the day. Um, which keeps me making think, I need to go and put that beer back in the fridge, don't I? I'll put my pink one back in the fridge in a minute. Um, so my brain goes all over the place at times. Um, so, yeah, so this time we got in. And the beer that was on cask, when the pub opened at 11, oh yeah, <laughs> I can't beat a pub what opens at 11, it was the Believe IPA, and it was 6%, I didn't realise when I put, when I bought it, it was this, I didn't. Re I, I just thought it was, the, actually the yellow one, this is the pink one, that's all I knew it as. We'd actually had a can of that in the previous one at uh, the Town Mouse, which is a great little bot basement bar, which I'll talk about later as well, I love Newcastle. Um, but, um, yeah, so they had that on cask at Lady Grey's, and it was beautiful. So 6% proper modern style IPA on cask. It was beautiful. It's those kind of beers don't often exist, and when they do, could be dog rough, because um, often they'll be sitting around for ages. So I think we were really, were really fortunate to um, to drop on, to be honest with that. Then there's another place which where we've been multiple to every time at least once on the trips to Newcastle this year. It's about I wish I've been to it multiple times before as well. <coughs> it's called um Mean Mean Eyed Cat, and that's not a million miles from the park where uh, where Wilder are. Weird little bar. Great. Um uh, decor is bright. <laughs> and the theme is the well they've got a the theme is kind of kind of psycho Billy, but then Mexican wrestling, and then a bit kind of like country, country and western kind of music, and it's kind of rock and roll, kind of garagey rock and roll, and stuff like that, and then pro wrestling and sugar skulls and all and stuff. It's weird. It's a weird place, but it's great. Tiny little kind of prefab building. Next to like an optician's, it's probably space seats for about fifteen people, but it's a great place. I said, uh, and and they one of their house beers on cask it's by Armstead. I think it's called Cramped. And the text text is in the style of the the kind of rock band Cramps, the Cramps. Which I'm not that fussed about. I mean, they're kind of like, they've got that kind of weird psychobilly kind of horror rock kind of weird thing going on. But yeah, so which it all kind of fits in with the style of that bar. It's great. Great little place. Very welcoming staff. Always got an interesting list. Got a bunch of house beers, which I think is wonderful. I think the house cask is, as I said, um, a pale from Alma State, and then they've got White Rat from Aust um, Rat Brewery in Uddersfield. Which is a great session beer, and cat on keg. I think the uh, house beer is by uh, Two by Two, which is a, another local brewery, which are pretty good actually. I've got no problem with that brewery at all. I just don't know if I, I'm not fussed by the branding. I had a fucking nuts beer by them last time I was in Newcastle. It looked like milk. It was that opaque. But um, yeah, so you'll always get, and I think they had the pink. Uh, IPA, I think they had that on draft as well. So, um, th so that's always always a bit of a, a guaranteed place to get it. I'm just going to go and pop my pink one back in the fridge. Don't go anywhere. Don't go anywhere. I'm going to literally be like ten seconds. 
Don't want don't have don't have warm IPA. I'm coming back. I'm back. Don't go. I'm back. Oh, see two people. You couldn't wait that long. <laughs> Literally. I'm back. Cool. Right. So um yeah, so we'd hope to to go to the brewery actually this uh, this time to drink in, but due to the the global bastard, um, they weren't they weren't um, they weren't uh, allowing drinking in, which is a real shame. So, but it gives me another reason to go back because uh, I said I do do love Newcastle just as a place, it's a great place to drink, one of the best places in the country, I'd say. It's quite a big place though; <coughs> it's quite a sprawling place in Newcastle, but there's nice little pockets. So you can go. Well, we'll go down near the bridge in the in the early afternoon. We'll get something to eat, and then we can go over to like Oosburn or something. Next day, you can go up near the university and blah blah blah. There's a lot of options, and it's just yeah, it's a really friendly place. Yeah, and I'd love I'd love to bring a bunch of like southern mates up there just to be ma just entertained by the accent because it's just wonderful. So. So yeah, no, I'm a, I'm a big fan. Anyway, I'm I'm getting to the edge of this. This way, I'm winding up my chit chat. So, our first one. So that was, um, the simple pleasures, pile out, tasty stuff. Then now, another four percenter. So rarity that you find me drinking two four percent beers back to back. I'd often start on one. The next one's gonna be at least seven. <laughs> but but that's just me. <laughs> Still have someone else's gimmick as well already. It's shocking behaviour. See any comments, questions? Tell us what you're drinking. I'll tell you. That was me. I made that up. I would I was the first person on beer tube to um ask where what you're drinking. I didn't ask where you're from, what you're drinking. That's what was my periscope thing. What can I say? I'm an innovator. Often imitated, never replicated. That's how, that's how, that's my that's my epitaph essentially. <laughs> never been in Newcastle. Oh, I mean, sorry, I'm re just reading. Not sure. Kent saying Kent from Kirk's Beer Reviews says uh, never been in Newcastle. It's on my to do list. I really hope you get up this way, mate. I'd love to take you around. And they got a comment. They got from Cat. Hey, Cat, how you doing? I hope um, life's treating you well. Um, and she says, loved my trip to Newcastle last year while I'm um, craft beer calling. So good. So, yeah, craft beer calling. You're going to be fucking psychic to get tickets for that. It's nuts. Oddly, well, while I'm talking to Kat, um, it was your and Phil's check-ins of some pressure drop at Dat Bar, D-A-T, Bar, Dat Bar, which is a shite name for a bar. Um this will be probably one of the most sweary kind of like streams. What was going on? There's a lot of beer tube streams going on tonight. One of the most sweary ones. Um, I, I just never we never got round to it, and then like look through a window and like oh, I don't know if there's much on, but, we but um, once again didn't get into there. But we was seeing your check-ins was the reason why we looked at that place. But yeah, I love Newcastle. What are you drinking? That's just you. Well, there you go. <laughs> Thank you. Absolutely. This, but anyway, I've, I've completely just started drinking this, and it's like I'm like I'm having a chat with my mates last night. You want to drink a bit too much, so I'm not working on a Friday at the moment because I'm furloughed for one day a week, which for the amount of money I get paid is um, marginal, isn't it really the benefit of it? So yes, yeah, so this is what I'm on now. It is what's it called? So single strain DDH, and it says. Once again, lamp on. <whistles> Terrible eyesight. I get should get glasses, but I'm too vain. It says single uh, session session pale, not session IPA. Session pale. That stings with grapefruit tones, mango hit and subtle hints. I'm going to steal all these tasty notes, by the way. Subtle hints of lime from the magic of citra hops. I thought it was citra. Super hazy and super drinkable. This is the perfect modern session beer. Well, that's the, that's 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 up to the to the 
drinker, isn't it, really? The beer holder. <laughs> um, but yeah. Yes, I'd agree. So let's give it uh, give it the, the, the full kind of like treatment, the bullshit. Yeah, you, you know what I mean. Come on, let's go through the motions. <laughs> oh, look at it, it's glowing. Ah. But yeah, pretty hazy. Pretty hazy is that one. That fell. I think that's pretty accurate. Maybe a bit too luminous. But it is a um, mango in bottom end of murky for months. Um, kind of can't help but think it looks like mango flash. Absolutely. Daz White, one to Dean. If you ever see this, Daz White, head on that. Great condition. <coughs> Sorry, all this yapping. I need to um, lubricate. Yeah, I get what they're saying with the mango. This it's got a little bit more softness than the original one did. It's got a little musty edge. I said it's just citra. I, these days, I can. I, once upon a time, I used to like to think I had a good handle on a few hops, and maybe I think drinking this now and thinking of like fruit car site exhibition by Verdant, which is all citra. Yeah. When I'm told, I can go, oh, yeah, that's what citrus like, isn't it? I think that's Bob on. Yeah, mango. I'm going to go kiwi, lychee. I'm always eating lychees, you see. Um, it's, a it's quite a zesty fella. Swirl, swirl and sniff. Once again, I made that. <laughs> I'm just going to come off the most bitter arsehole. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm fine with that. Yeah, grapefruit mango. But yeah, it really has got a mango edge to it. That's really impressive for a beer of this size. It has that softer, fuller character. It's got a bit of wine gum going on. I'm going to go orange wine gum. That one's for cat. <laughs> There's a bit of a hint of pine. I'll drink some more. And then I might come back to... I always say that I'll come back to taste notes. I forget. I mean, aroma. I always forget. Anyway, cheers, whatever you're drinking out there. Come on, tell us what you're drinking. I'm not taking the piss. I said, I, I started it. Periscope. Often imitated, never never replicated. <laughs> oh, I'm really going to lose life friends on this. should never be allowed left to my own devices. Yeah. That's lovely. Oh, didn't it? This is really weird. Same maybe thing. Some a bit more of that. Maybe maybe the maybe they've got a bit more of the old oats and wheat malt and stuff like that in this. It's just it's softer, it's fuller. Maybe there's a thing in my head which is saying, Oh, citrus in those kind of beers, isn't it? Can't help but be um Baffled by your own brain, can you? Yeah, mango. Something green. The flavour is quite green in a certain way. Not in a burny, too fresh. Because these aren't mega fresh. These are not the current range of range before. So probably a month or two old. Yeah, a month or two old, I think. I can't help but think bitter lemon. You know that weird drink? There you go. There you go. There's one for me. Wine gums. Love it. <laughs> I just came to me. Um, but yeah. And another one from Kat says, hey, just had the octopod. Blimey. You said octopod. That's not been knocking around for that. Yeah. Well, it's bonkers. It says octopod from... Wonder Beyond. I've not had anything from Wonder Beyond for ever, uh, for ages. But Mango softened no end. Not sharp as last time. Yeah, it was a bit nuts. Was that? I've uh, I think I've gone off um, Wonder Beyond. They're not the kind of beers I like. That, that brings me back to one thing I like. One thing, and I had I had drank three Colonel beers last night, and I kind of see these guys kind of sit somewhere around that kind of like neighborhood as well. Really well made beers. 
simple, not doing anything silly. One of the current beers is called Blue Cheese. I'm sure that's a good reason. I get the vein of blue cheese in certain hops, actually. But they don't go gimmicky up very very often, I don't think. Always at the heart of it is a really high-quality beer. So you never kind of like lose the purpose of it. They'd never go overtly kind of juice bomb. I wouldn't say from what I've had. I think they always retain balance, quality, <coughs> clarity. Certain levels of tradition, but modern as well. As I said, I can see that comparison to Colonel. I'm making that comparison to Colonel. <laughs> so I think they're really nice. Because they do have a little bit... You can see, you can taste a bit of malt character in there. It's not just juice. But crisp, balanced. It has bitterness. It has a sharpness. Once again, a floral edge as well. Stupid drinkability. Obviously, it's four percent, so you'd have to worry about it too much. Session, the word session. Mm. I was listening um, Hop Hopinions podcast today. I do, I do love Stephen Martin, but they do come out with some <laughs> nonsense at times. Session. What does session mean? What is the importance of session? Because I'm drinking, in theory, a session beer, four percent ABV. <coughs> um, but. I don't think you, I mean, you can, you don't have to drink the same beer all day. You can start on one of these. You can, and then you can go on to like a 10% Imperial Stout if you want. Get a small measure of it. Move on to a 6% IPA, which I'll be on next. Go, go to the next pub you go into. It's another lovely 4% ABV. Buy that one later on in the day. Sour. Next, Imperial Fucking Fruity Goes. I'm one of them. Next place, Imperial Stout. Brilliant. Next one, get a bit pissed. 4.5% Porter. Just, just find you. It's all about kind of like it's a, it's about rhythm, if you ask me. Um, so I don't think I don't think there's a and especially nowadays, now this the shit all we're in now. I don't think there's a relevance of session anyway, because it's all about pacing as well. You don't have to be fucking throwing it down your neck. Yeah, you, if you drink 17 pints of this, you're going to be pretty pissed. If I have the equivalent of three pints of this, and a third of an Imperial Stout, and a third of a, a Lambic, and a half of a 7% IPA, it all adds up, doesn't it? But it's not. It's, it's, a, it's a, for me. It's a it's a fallacy. Is the idea of just being able to just down pints and pints and pints of low ABV beer and that uh, and that'll just see you right for you. Oh, I'll be fine. I'll be fine. It's fucking chuck it down my neck. It's nonsense. It's a fallacy. So yeah. Anyway, go back to honestly. That's the reason why I tuned in. Probably maybe. And I would strongly suggest you checking these guys out. Buy, buy the beer. Absolutely. As I said, I bought all this beer this lunchtime <coughs> from the Triangle in Shipley. Hopefully Gav sorted out the nationwide delivery. But go on Almost's, um website and let's go back to that so you can stop looking at my stupid face. So let's go back to Almost's website. Add to stream. All right, how you doing? So, Beer. Beer, that's the important thing. Everybody likes beer. There you go, that's the one I want, and I couldn't get it. So for the sake of not having it, so it's a, it's a strong pale that pushes tropical, uh, pushes tropical fruits, balancing general citrus pithiness. Beautiful, balanced, daily drink, packed full of aroma and flavour. Well, you'd hope so. First from Equinox, Simcoe, and Mosaic. So they, they, they do refer to that as green, but and then it's there it's been Sim Centennial Columbus. Simcoe IPA, APA. Probably just yes, a little bit bigger, a little bit more malt. I've I've probably had it. And then these are the current specials. Southern Lights. I think I've had, I had Northern Lights quite recently. So these are all I think uh, they're probably available on, on here. I'll, I'll, I should look. I've got some. They've got some. Uh, what's it called? Uh, um, what's that? Script called, can't remember. I didn't realise they're not they're not turned it off. Have they? They're not got a they're not got a forward slash, backward slash there or something. 
So he's not bringing in his font. <laughs> the bit of web design terminology. So farmhouse pale, brewed with Northern Hemisphere yeast. With Northern Hemisphere yeast. Wonderfully blended with some of the Hemisphere hops. What's the Northern Hemisphere yeast? Is it Kavik? Kavik. It was created as a vinous aroma of funky ripe tropical fruits. Just play your own funky, uh, funky high, high, high bass, bit of slap bass for that, for that one. Um, Vision Sour IPA. I'm not bothered about sour IPAs, but there you go. Complex union of hops, yeast, fruit, and vanilla. Hmm. Perfectly blended. Create their own vision of what an IPA can be. Well, that's that's your opinion. I don't know. I'm not a fan of sour IPAs. No thanks. And then this one, which is the one what's particularly my fancy. Blue cheese double IPA. It's not cheese, is it? Blue cheese is fiercely hot with mosaic simcoat. Citra is like a beer. It's dank and skunky. Hopefully not. But I know what you mean. <laughs> <coughs> with tropical aromas of mango, guava, pineapple and brewbies that are perfectly aligned. With herbal back now. I like the sound of that one. I had dank recently from that one, which is good. Yeah, I, I, I do get There you go. That's what I'm just talking about. That fella. It's not sizing properly, lads. <laughs> yeah, I really liked that. But I, can, I do get um, a certain level of kind of blue cheese, the vein of a blue cheese from from um, certain kind of like dank hops. And then I could have got this. I was tempted, but I didn't love it, so I didn't buy it. The mango IPA, which I actually had up at a cracking pub call last time it was up, a couple of weeks ago. Called the Cumberland Arms, which is the most a lovely, characterful pub. Not at its best during these times. It's one of those places that you, it's full of character, and it needs to be full of people, and, and the walls need to be sweating. It's a and a bustling atmosphere, but it was dead, and it, but it was still a lovely time. Um, Northern Lights, I had that we had that one recently, a while back, probably September. Solid kind of. Like I said the, the, a lot of it is quite lower lower se session. I had that Kush that was good. Knowingly, I wanted to get that, but that had sold out. I did want that from my local shop today, but they sold it, and I've not. And they know, and they've done a triple fruit of girls coconut. Well, there you go. I love a bit of bloody coconut. Not had that either. But then you, so you can see all the bump clips. So it's like a slice of slice of um, timber. Great. So they've done loads of stuff. Oats and milk. Hmm. That's what kind of beer was that then? Uh, did, 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 peanut butter porter. So they do a little bit of fun. Oh, I love it. I love an American brown salted caramel. That one's for Peter, the coolest drinker. Oyster and seaweed, seaweed porter. Oh, there's a lot of stuff not on there. But yeah, they've done, they said they've done loads of beer. Actually, it happens. Um, f the first ever. Sabro beer I had, I think, was at Almasty. It was Sabro and I think Chinook. And it was fucking nuts. It tasted so much like um freshly a fresh kind of fresh basil. It was insane. I was like, what is this? I didn't get a load of coconut from that particular one. Maybe maybe but more fresh basil. And I absolutely loved it. And ever since then I've been all about Sabro. Bloody love Sabro. So I'm just checking back for some comments. Uh, what we got there? Pontus Johnson, what's your favourite Swedish beer? I'll get onto that in a bit. It's not their font. <laughs> yeah. Very funny, Craig. <laughs> so there's a bit of spiel there. Uh, well, they've, they've done a blog twice. Good on them. Best intentions. Couldn't be asked. <laughs> Shop. That's the bit everybody's interested Come on, buy your bloody beer, which I really, uh, I'm a big fan. Can get them on for Trembling Madness at the moment as well. So they do nationwide delivery, great shop in York. Do a can club, got some cool merch. They've got a got a fucking Frasher magazine spoof. They've got a Misfits one. I don't like Misfits, but I recognise the cultural reference. Not a skateboarder, but I'd definitely wear a thing. I don't know. What's that then? That rem reminds me of something. So again, I think they're all kind of like cultural references, aren't they? London Dungeon. <laughs> yeah, it's just misfits. 
Yes, so oh, so journey. Our beers are the beautiful balance. Oh, there you go. Daily drinks packed with full flavor and compromising big flavors and aromas. Amnesty is a showcase for fresh, seasonally inspired ales. A brewery brew in the northeast. Only because uh, the only consistent constant is change. Join in, explore. So there you go. Bit of, bit of merch on there, mate. But yeah, this is what you were interested in. It. So the, the, as as it just went through. Those, I think those are your new ones. They're doing some specials. They did this nuts, um, like 50% off sale. And they got absolutely slammed. And I missed out on it all. So the only thing they had was 24 packs of the Mango IPA by the time I got on there. So there we go. Let's have a quick look on here. Rory. So this is, must be the new one where they moved. After a long year of searching for the right premises, making plans for how, how the new brewery would look, finally got their keys to unit. A to A. Let the work begin. There we go. It's quite characterful for a brewery, isn't it? I think he's a brewer. They're all the beardy men and the lady. <laughs> yeah, I think he, he's a brewer. He's often working in there, but I don't know what his connection to them is. He's a, I think he's a blogger. I can't, 300 pound cyclist or something like that. I might be massively insulting that, but... So what the cans used to look like. They appeared around uh, around a couple of years ago and just didn't really kind of like grab anybody's attention. That's um, former um, pro wrestler Heath Slater. It's not it's got, it's just sort of similar. There you go. And this is at the old brewery. This bit, this, this bit here. They're the stamps that I wanted and they didn't have, and I cried. Oh, really? Was that it? Fifteen? No. What six years ago when I went? I think it was. It might have been like fourth birthday, something like that. Yeah, four, four, third or fourth birthday I went to. <coughs> Excuse me. But I stood around one of them with some lovely people and and shared some. And Gary shared some. See if Gary's Gary and Jill are on any of these pictures. <coughs> and shared um lots of um posh. American imports that they brought back. There you, there you go. That's at the Free Trade. Great pub. And they've usually got some almonds on at Free Trade. There you go. That's where that pump clips look. Oh, there you go. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Loving that. Look, Free Trade. So there you go. That's all that shiz. People. Oh, we're going to learn. We're going to learn a bit now. That's Mark. He's a head brewer and owner. That's Catherine. She's Chief Hopper. Chief Hopper. Um, cheap sniffer, that's Paul. That's that's the chap who you kind of you see around. I'm sure he had a bit. He, well, he's clearly got a bigger beard now, hasn't he? But I think I was right. Emily, chief schmoozer, and Callum, brewery assistant. You know, he's not a chief of anything. You're a low life Callum. <laughs> not really. I don't even know you. But <laughs> you're the only one who wants a chief or something. I think that's poor, poor for. <laughs> So there you go, there's a bunch of shares about blogs. Yeah. Gallery, gallery, gallery. Yeah. This is what it looked this is what it used to look like. Great. Well look at that. Oh that look lovely. I, I think I took a very similar picture, but not balance. I want balance in a glass and a piece of fruit. How many glasses did they break in the taking of these fruit photos? <laughs> Love it. <laughs> um, what the fuck's going on there? Lovely. Breakfast out. I'd have some of that. Oh, and there's Daniel Vane of Exhale, I think, now. So there you go. That's a bit of a bit of shiz about Almasty. I'm going to jump onto Untap now. I'm sure there's like four people watching this. Nine. Wow. Thank you, Becky. <laughs> Lovely face. Um. So this one is, did I say, single strain. We'll, we'll run through this. As I said, it's all about the comments, and I will, I will be slightly offensive potentially to everybody who leaves a comment on Untap because I'm not going to go. Single strain, there we go. I presume they'll do multiple more, multiple others of this in the coming months. So, 
Susan C, good, a woman on there. It's always men called Andrew H and stuff. She says, four and a half. Well, two right. But, uh, good stuff. Andrew, well, blah, 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 blah. See, it's up. Was it? Oh, sorry. See, this is, Craig's better at this than me. This is why I always get Craig to do it on Good Beer Live. 260 check ins, 174 unique, which is still quite a low number, I guess, isn't it? But 3.84, that's not bad. 4% once again. I'm telling you, they do this kind of beer good. Mark C says, light and tasty. Caps and taps down in London, near, near Johnny Garrett's neck of the woods, isn't it? Oh, yes. The Real Ale Classroom. That's a funny name. Um, come on, comments, people. What are your comments? A lot of growler fill. A couple of growler fills I've seen of this knocking around, not just the... See? The, la the ladies. <laughs> the ladies are loving this one. Um, no, I am actually quite impressed. The, the ratio of men to women on this you know, check-ins of this beer. Oh, here we go. Hopcat. Oh, no, I've lost Hopcat's comment. Citrus single DDH. DDH. <coughs> Very fruity, bitter, slightly wheaty. As a low ABV hoppy beers are. Ah, goes down easily. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know if I'd agree with all the comments, but thanks for the comments. Hopcat. You need to give it a three point seven five, which is respectable. I think I think it might be around that, right? I think that I think I'd give it a free that three seven five. Any more? Any more? Uh, <laughs> Matt H. No, from North Bottle Shop, which is over in Whitley, Whitley Bay. It looks like a good shop. Not much of this. Thin and weak. Oh, Matt, you bitch. <laughs> but you still give it three and a half. I think that's what well, that's like a six. That's like a six, six, seven out of ten, isn't it? That's not bad. Goodness me, I would like to. What do you give a beer you absolutely love? Seven out of five. Easy going. Easy going. It's all one word, isn't it? <laughs> Rich, Rick, Rick H. Sorry, I, I, I devolved you to a Rich. We've got Paul, you and our CD of, bit, of, of podcast following fame. Very decent single hop, Citra Pale Ale. 375, I'm with you on that, Paul. He's a man who comments a lot on the um, Opinions podcast. Anything else? Anything else? I could make a thing out of this. What do you think? Well, Adam Buxton used to make um, do a show about um, entertaining... Oh, that might be a good idea. I might not give that away now. Entertaining YouTube um, comments. I might do entertaining untapped comments. I'd have to trawl through untapped, though. How depressing would that be? Someone's got a filter. What's he called? Bill L. I'm going to call you William. I've never met you before. I think that'd be impersonal. Brudo glass. Fuck off. No, I don't mind Brudo. <laughs> Hops and crafts. Do you think they have uh, like needlework and paper mache? What's the bit where you, you paste down pieces of, like, paper? <laughs> I forgot what it's called. I'm thinking reportage, but that's not that. What's it called? Eric K. No. Come on, comments, people. Come on. We want comments. Oh, somebody's got, got a, gone with a bigger font. Oh, I'm interested in this. Wouldn't have guessed this was a single citra. Chive and Mallow? Mallow? Marshmallow, mallow, chive and mallow. What's mallow? Pleasant, if a little splashy. Oh, that's beautiful. What a beautiful comment. I might have to steal that. A little, if a little splashy. Thank you, Hop Sleeve. Great name. I'm going to steal. I'm going to turn my channel into that. I am Rob from Hop Sleeve. <laughs> Thanks for joining me for another splashy beer review. I'm going to have to watch. Um, um, John drinks and get some 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 zingers and rip him off for all his all his all his um banter. <laughs> if you have never watched John John drinks, you really should. It's a wonderful channel. 
watching this morning drinking a 30 year old whiskey it was very entertaining so we're not going to go to another page because that would be um indulgent if not <laughs> if nothing else so it's me back oh they fun lovely face thank you very much so yeah there you go that's almost's oh about and we've got I just wanted to crop that bit off and just so uh, Craig was saying, just about to crack a ham sandwich. Showing off. <laughs> Check me out. I'm having a fucking ham sandwich. All right. Let's crack a ham sandwich, New England IPA from Time and Tide. I find it quite interesting, this whole thing with people watching. I'm sure there's people going, watch Simon for a bit, watch me for a bit, watch Mark for a bit. Pick a mix in it. Mine's the irrelevant, <laughs> irreverent. And irrelevant, sweary one. Simon's very, very PG, pissed, pissed and PG. And Max the quiz, quizzer. So yes, so Craig's cracking on there, cracking on, boom, cracking on to a ham sandwich. You know that be from time to time. <coughs> I think they had that somewhere recently. I think Charlie Manners had it, which I will wholeheartedly recommend anybody. The, the service is great. I love those people. I, 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 in theory, I work in York. I work for a company based in York. I work from home at the moment. Work at the moment. That's a nice concept, isn't it? Um, and I think Germany Man's a great shop. And I think they've gone from strength to strength, oddly, during these times. But they're a place because the city centre, around this year, time of the year, they would be making an absolute killing. Especially in December, you beat the BQs. The Q, you'd be like six, seven deep at the at the counter, trying to get um trying to get served in there. So they're missing out, but it's a great shop and it's really good value. And they've um, got an incredible range. If you've never been on there, I'm gonna I'm gonna do a little, I'm gonna do a little screen share on the shiz. I think it's worth it. Don't, obviously, you should go on the triangle before anything else because they're the ones that pay my bills. <laughs> I always look on new lines because I mean I'm a fickle craft beer drinker. I'm only interested in what's new. I think that's always a good way. I mean, so just just to give you a good example, a bit cheeky day here, knocking around north. Let's gloss over that. Pressure drop, pressure drop, all that shit on Belgian beer. Not going to say anything else. Did I have that rush for? Have I drunk it yet? I can't remember. A bit of Titanic in for Christmas. No, thanks. Some nut stuff from Tool. Which, um, there you go, Becky. <coughs> Barley wine. Bar <laughs> I'm not going to sing. Some fancy Tool stuff for your Christmas delectation. A really boring sounding um, seasonal from Northern Monk. Mm. Aren't you excited to drink a kind of autumn? Is it Fave? Just says autumn. Ugh. When, this is quite interesting. A bit of pinter. A bit of pinter. Bit of pinter. Bit of pinter. <laughs> so, yeah, anyway, I should look at. So, I'm Mr. Shears is on here. I'll ask T because I'm going to keep it relatively. So, there you go. I think this is a good place. If you want to go get a bit more, they've got the green one, what I wanted. There you go. So, it's probably a good, good place to get it. Obviously, go direct because it'll be a little bit cheaper. But if you want a bit more range, but you want to pick up some Almasty, <coughs> this is a good spot. I mean, £5.65 for a brand new double IPA. That's not a bad price, is it really? I bought, I mean, the track when I had the other on Sunday was absolutely incredible, but you're paying £7.25 for it. That's five sixty five for a, for a double IPA. I think that's incredible value, but yeah. So you can you can nab a couple of these and get some some wonderful trendy shears. You can't go wrong, can you? I think uh, I think you should definitely make it your life's duty to buy some um, some almasty and some other tasty stuff from um, from Trembling Manus. Where I would go when I was at work, I'd probably go at least three out of four lunch times. I'd have a look in. Go and have a look. 
Miss that to a certain degree. Don't miss travelling to York. The expense of that. Spend all that money on beer now. Which it turns out I do. <laughs> mm. That's gone. Lovely, lo lovely, lovely, lovely. I'm going to grab my other one. The challenge is, for all seven people watching, don't go. I'm only going to be about five seconds. I'm going to go. Oh, you're already left. The in anticipation of me going. You're going to miss the start of the next one. And what I've got planned for the start of this next one, you don't want to miss. See how quick was that? <laughs> Actually, I, it, it was it was the verbal equivalent of. Do you know those? red circles on um on thumbnails and youtube essentially that oh thank you alex oh well that's nice at least i can rely on some people <laughs> sorry that's my mate alex saying i won't leave thanks alex mate that's what she said <laughs> thanks what are you drinking what are you drinking tonight alex what are you drinking come on everybody Craig, we know Craig's drinking ham sandwich from time and time. What are you drinking? Come on, tell us all. There we go. So, I'm getting all carried away. I've done pretty well. I mean, I'm over an hour. I'm just film, still yammering on. Can you imagine actually being in a conversation with me after two beers? This is what it's like. <laughs> As Alex knows from last night. Oh, I don't, don't want to pour my beer on the computer. It's my work computer. I'm fucked if I damage it. Just believe IPA. Semi no bed poor, once again. Always paying tribute to my friend Adam. I'm gonna put the I'm gonna put my lamp on again. This is Terry Kasia. Terry used to do this, didn't he? Yeah, piece of paper put it behind it. You've got a bit of that. There you go. I think that's pretty accurate. So not as turbid, but it seems kind of a little bit clearer. Maybe slightly darker, but uh, kind of like a, once again, goldish, but not as murky as the last one. Core range, as I said earlier, they do it in casks, so it's um, so only four people now. You're going you're gonna to miss all the good shit. A bit there where I'm not just rambling on. Um, so, yeah, it's called Believe. It says juicy and hazy. Just like me. <laughs> Sorry, that's amusing, but that means nothing. But yeah, I had this on ca on cast a couple of times when I were up in Newcastle recently. It says a big IPA balance, uh, balancing juice, uh, juicy mango with a touch of white wine and gooseberry. One of our modern hazy pale ales that showcase our trademark style. Our musty is focused on contemporary ales that push flavour to the fore. Well, there you go. That's their thing, isn't it? There you go. I forgot the, the gooseberry and stuff. Mm. Okay. So, aroma. Aroma and the Almasty Believe. That's, that's, that's a reference for a very small amount of people who were watching beer reviews about five years ago. I'm doing it all. I'm, just doing, I'm, doing, I'm, on the, I'm doing the Beer Gay Nation swell. Still that, still that audience as well. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, it smells amazing. I go in, Mom. Yeah, mango, gooseberry. <laughs> Sorry. No. And they said white wine. Didn't they? they said white wine and gooseberry. Yeah, I can. Get, I can understand that. For me, it kind of has a certain kind of maybe slight tannin note, and it has a, a slight mustiness to it. it. Smells great. It smells really inviting. It smells juicy. Pine. I'm going to go a bit more pine. Yeah, it smells great. It's, it's got a real roundedness to it. A real kind of full character. Maybe tin pineapple chunks I'm going to go. What have been left open for a bit. 
But it's, I can't help but think there's something slightly woody about it. Oh, yeah, love it. Oh, what hops are in this? Sorry, I'm just going to jump on Armister's website. Sorry, I was, I, was, I was diving in. Does it say what hops are in this? Oh, right, so this is Nelson, Mosaic, and Azaka. Oh, wow. Carl Range reply, uh, um, relying on those hops is, is, is bold. Oh, no, it's love. It's 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 a tasty ass beer, but yeah, yeah. I think it must have had multiple iterations in the past. Nelson Centennial Pale. No, that's oh, I don't know what that is all about. But yeah, Nelson Mosaic Azaka. That's all I'm gonna taste. Mm. First thing, I can taste the Mosaic hops. Mm. Mm. And then I can sm I can taste the kind of vinous quality of Nelson Sorvin. And now I can taste the um, non-specific character of Azaka hops. Honestly, I really don't know what Azaka tastes like at these days. So, uh, what what what? Let's have a look. As, uh, hops. What do? Charles Farham, that's good enough for me. British, 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 British hopsters. Hop merchants, I guess, with Farhams. I, I, I'm going to do the screen share shares again because I know you're like that. Boom. So Charles Farham, which is a British. Uh, so Azaka. For the Haitian god of agriculture, is a big hop in citrus and tropical fruit notes. So excellent aromatic qualities have quickly made Azaka trademark a go to hop for late and dry hopping additions in a variety of styles of beer used for both bittering and aroma. Des uh, descendant of Northern Brewer and Summit. Mm. Cross between. Uh, what the fuck is that word? Toy or a murderer? And an unknown variety. American Dwarf Hop. So it's a Dwarf Hop as well. At least 2013. Uh. So there you go. Characteristics. Mango, orange, and pine. I said pine. Come on. Bring it in. I think I said orange. I said mango. Come on. This guy knows a Zaka. <laughs> um, and then you've got your blah de blah Quite high out for acid. There you go. If you know anything about flavor, flavor intensity. Nine. Nine out of what? Nine out of ten? Nine out of twenty-four? I don't know. So there you go. There's a bit of the old. Um, that's what a zaka supposedly tastes like. Just it's not educating. That's what I'm doing as well. Entertaining and educating. <laughs> right. So that's all you want to know now. Let's go on to untap and see what these people... Oh, I should give you some taste notes, shouldn't I? Truthfully. Come on. Focus. Yeah. Mango. Slightly dank. Slightly ratty. It's kind of earthy. Slightly tanniny kind of thing. White wine. Tannins. That's how you can pass off someone else's taste notes as your own. Just change the word. Yep, once again, as all of them, it has got a bitter bite towards the back end, which is lovely. It keeps coming back. 6%, it's not silly. You can drink a lot of it. It's not. I would, this is not New England IPA. Once again, so that is that kernel thing. It sits somewhere in between. That not that that kind of like Central Coast IPA, Mountain IPA. It, no, it doesn't need to be. Think about what it is. If you, you so we you, you want a load of aroma, you want a load of hot flavour, you want balance, you want a bit of bitterness because obviously that's going to be the lovely about balance. That's how you make just a good beer, if you ask me. This is not going to blow your socks off, but it's damn good. This is the kind of beer you can you can rely on it, and there's nothing wrong with that. 
and it's pretty well priced as well. So you can't really can't really complain about how much. How much they, oh, they, they ain't got any in stock, have they? <coughs> but yeah, it's cracking. Right, untapped. Ooh, let's go back. Let's go back to untapped. Al Masti. And then, oh, I'm sharing. I'll just stream. There you go. Right. I'm going to do this and then I'm going to probably sign off. Unless there's any comments, any questions, or anything like that. Anything you've ever wanted to ask me. I will answer any, anything that you ask. Uh, I probably won't. I've, I've got my limits. Um... I don't believe I'm a fucking written moron. So this is this is what I'm on at the moment. So believe IPA. So total check-ins, 360. See, these guys are they were on a small scale, and I said massively have looked. Unique check-ins 312. Let's see who's check this bugger in. It's often there are a lot of people who are, who are doing the same ones, which is great. Richard M is back again, or is it Jeremy Corbyn? I'm not sure which. It says juicy, hazy IPA. That will that'll do me. That'll do me. I appear to be having an evening with Amsterdam Brewery. I'm happy with that. Me too, Richard M. Why don't you come around here? Oh, you can't go around someone else's house, can you? But yeah, absolutely. That's exactly what I'm doing. Yeah, doing it together, me and Richard M. Doing it together, you know what I mean? Drinking similar beers. <laughs> Dig, D, D. Who's got, whose avatar is Rabsy Nesbit? Can't go wrong with that. It says, lovely aroma, quite dry, a little sherbet, peach and orange. I'd say a little splashy. And we've got Zach. Oh, yeah, he's got a C and a K. And he's back on keg. Metal fingers. Oh, but he's drinking on keg at home. What's all that about? Hop sleeves is back. My favourite. Oh, I love you, hop sleeves. Pastille, <laughs> pastille fruits. So fruit pastels. That's what he's on about, isn't it? Oh, he's brought his mallow again. What are you doing, your mallow? Get your mallow out of here. Pastel fruits on the nose. I go more wine gums than anything. If you're still on that cat, God bless you if you're still tuning into this nonsense. Thinish, mid finished, with a dry fruit skin out. I like that. Fr dry fruit skin out. Boom. Mic drop. Boom. See you later. <laughs> Bought it from Lupe P uh, Pintos. Where's Lupe, P Lupe Pintos then? Let's find out. Are you interested? What? Oh, it's Scotland. In Middle Lothian. Lupe Pintos, that, that traditional Scottish term. Maybe it is. Maybe I'm just massively culturally ignorant. Central Ale, that's where I got my first from. Alan C. Alan C in the place to be. <laughs> Sorry. Um, right, so where, where are we? It's got Matt H. There's Juicy Mango. Juicy Mango. Bitter, zesty, grapefruit. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Not sure if I'm fully with you, Matt. Oh, Hopcat's back again. Good juice. Good juice. Slightly spicy, smooth and bitter, just so. A hint of wheat. This is quite good. Four, yeah. I'll give you a four. I'll give it a four. I'll give you a four. It's a bit inappropriate, isn't it? Historical photograph of a lady drinking beer. S-J-E dot. <laughs> they have a gentle orange zest sniff. I like that. Light and delicate. Smooth mouth. Hmm. Takes one to no one. Citrus flavours with grapefruit dominance. Oh, great. I'm going to dominate you with my grapefruits. Sweet and bitter balance. Very sessionable. There you go. Amos' tap room. When was that? 7th of November. Oh, there you go. Oh, blow me down. Jenna D. At the Baileys of Brumsgrove. Well, oh, blimey, it's getting around then. Not Jenna D. <laughs> Sorry, that's terrible timing. And then David A. 
best of the three exclamation mark 4.25 I give it a 4 um, Keith there's been a lot of comments on this one I like it all the juicy Nelson mango grape gooseberry mosaic bubblegum berry sappy pine big bitter finish beaut yes I'm, I'm with you Keith 375 I give it give it a 4 go on lad don't be tight George S. I love it. I love another comments. He's got his Pentridge glasses. George S. Super hazy. Really good stuff. Yeah, I'd agree. Oh, another SJE. He's back in again. Spotting great breweries during coronavirus. Orange haze pour. Smells like an open grapefruit tin. Oh, yeah. Soft and fluffy entrance. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Come on. I come out with some right nonsense, but soft and fruity entrance. I'm not going there. I want to. Really shouldn't. Light fizz. Miss. Oh, this is beautiful. I love this. Oh, come on, this is beautiful. Oh, this makes this makes my makes my heart sore. Not as in bad. Um, supporting grapefruit. Oh, orange haze pour. Nice. Smells like an open tin of grapefruit. Kind of shit. I'd talk. I'd say. Sorry, I'm a bit close to the mic. Getting a bit wispy, Bob. Bob Harris. Oh, and I, oh, how are you doing? Bit, bit more John Peel, I guess, at that point. Soft and fluffy entrance. That's brilliant. That's lovely. Light fizz and Mr. Dense swill. Oh, come on. I'm, I think I'm I think I love you, SJE. Full stop. Juicy, bittersweet citrus freshness. Not bad. Going a bit more he- um air freshener. Sweet orange skin finish is lovely. Only 22 cans left. Oh, they must have bought a, a case of them. Yeah, it's a great beer. And I love your comments, SJE, if you ever see this. You beautiful human being. Graham S. Keeping it down, keeping it keeping it serious. Nice and tasty IPA for boom. Yeah. I mean I'm with I'm with you, Graham S. Oh, he's back again. Oh, he's back again. Come on, you Oh, you marvellous bastard. I'm gonna skip over Corona a bit. COVID. Am I gonna get <laughs> I'm not going to be monetized anymore. Yeah. Citrus skin nose. Citrus skin nose. Smooth orange juice starts. Uh, start has thickness before a bitter grapefruit swallow finishes dry. Oh, that's beautiful. Before a bitter grapefruit swallow finishes dry. Oh, yes. Come on now. Residue is an earthy fruit. Easy drinking, 6%. Oh, I love Oh, I think everybody should go follow SJE on, on tap because that's just beautifulness of comments. I'm loving all the comments on this one. I'm going to drink some more of it. Actually, I'm going to pour some more. Glug, 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 glug. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, get your ASMR. Oh, go on, Jake. It's just for you, mate. Mm, 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 mm. Drip, drip, drip. <laughs> Sorry. This is like an evening in talking to myself. Slightly, going slightly mad. There's less than 10 people watching that. I'm happy with that. Come on. Uh, see, I want to know where my... Com- I checked this in twice. Why did I completely mess, miss my own check-ins? Maybe it doesn't, doesn't show your own. I was mainly doing it so that, so I can make some entertaining comment about me. I'm so vapid. <laughs> Nick H. Come on. Not gonna do this for too much longer, don't worry. This is superb. Sorry, just shine away from five and a half, five out of five. Good on you, Nick. But it's delicious, juicy, but not thick, dry but not too dry, citrusy but not too sweet. A very, very good beer. Chilled. <laughs> you missed my gang sign then. What I'm doing to myself. <laughs> Chilled at four forty can. Good on you, Nick. I'm, I'm, with, I'm with Nick H. He's a good dude. Oh, there's comments on that one. Come on, come on, blind me. Oh, uh, there's a bit of a chat going on. I like it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go through this. Nick H says, "I've been meaning to try almost beers for, for a while. It looks like I might have to, uh, look like they might produce some bangers. Yes." This was fucking great. <laughs> Should have been four point seven five, just short of five. But a brilliant beer. That was Stuart L. 
I mean, Stuart Lell and Nick H are chatting. Thanks, mate. I forget some uh, some of the good stuff. Yeah, I'm all I'm all on board with Stuart L and Nick H. Gunnar Stavon, that's the same pe same people who own um, Lady Grey's. Gunnar Stavon, shit. Lady Lady Grey's on its day is wonderful. Adam, what's Adam doing here? He says, always been a massive fan of their cast beers, and this is um, the first can. From them, I've come across great beer. Yeah, there you go. Damn right, Wal Walkley beer is that? Is that Sheffield? Oh, there. <laughs> this is a this is a fantastic photograph. I, I must say, who was this? Bloody hell! Let's have a look. Let's let's look at this picture. I I think the depth of field on and composition on that crop the crop's a bit iffy. But if you went on, if you saw, I bet if they posted that on there. Um, Instagram stories that on the day they drank it, I bet it was a really nice photograph. But there's a nice depth of field, catching a little bit of light under the bottom of the glass here, so you get a nice bit of lacing. Ooh, scabby glass. It was a scabby glass. I don't, I don't know, no, I don't know. I'm sure it was a scabby glass. I don't know who, who, who posted this. 375, bit tight if you ask me. I'd say it was a four, but can versus cask, you've got to kind of like. But there's a nice depth of field. You're getting a little, the bar in the background's. Blurred out, your your beer is radiant. It's in focus, I think, and you've got you've got a branded beer mat, which is a nice detail from uh, on the um, on the um, on on the base of the glass, which I think is a nice touch. So that was in Lady Grey's in in Newcastle. So that um, whoever that was, I, I've lost it now. But um, whoever that was, I'd say they were they were bang on with their assumptions and. Um, Review, if you want to say, use those words, of that specific beer. Photograph, really nice. As I said, probably looked a bit better with, with a full crop on a, on, a, on, a, on, a, um, on a story on their Instagram. So there you go. So I'd say that that was the definitive comment. So I've just got a couple more comments before I, I sign off. We've got Kat again saying... Um, no buy gums in my stout from Cloudwater, although maybe a black one. Oh, blueberry maple. Oh, oh, the um, my continuous improvement. I didn't like the blueberry one, and I've not bought the orange one because I think sometimes chocolate orange tastes like tastes like a bit of sick at the back of your throat. So I'm not gonna buy that. Um, Becky, will there be any Amstead less for tomorrow? I can categorically say no. All gone. Soz. And then Greg says, I'm sure Rob will have an Amster beer for you. No. No. No, I won't. <laughs> Drunk it all. I bought it with the intention of drinking it now. For the entertainment of five people. Thank you very much. For the last hour and a half. I don't know how Simon does this for five hours. I've been on for an hour and a half and I've had three beers. Falling over, but yes, so big thanks to everyone who's tuned into this nonsense and stuck with me for as long as you could bear. <laughs> Maybe I'll, if you want me to do this, I, mean, I, I, I imagine a lot more people are going to watch this after the fact. Uh, because I've not posted this much this week because I wanted because I've run out of videos to be honest, I've not got many. And um, I wanted to make this a bit of a thing today as well. So everybody who watches this after the fact, good, God bless you for sticking with this nonsense for as long as you do. And I hope you check out Almas Day. I'd say, as I said, Trembling Madness, probably a good place to get it. Pop some of them in your, in your basket and then get some other trendy shit as well. And um, I think you'll be really pleased. I said they're not going to blow your socks off, but I think you'll be really happy with them. And I think they're a brewery you'll come back to. I really like Almsley. I really like Newcastle. That I've got a bit of affinity with it. I'm, I'm kind of yeah. I'm, I'm a fan, and I'll always try their stuff going forward as well. Just because they're a small brewery and they need, uh, I think they deserve. Um, yeah, I said they've got that kernel thing going on. Quality, quality balance, no silliness. They're not trying to pull the wool over your eyes. Just straight up beer. It's well made beer. Don't think you can kind of um, 
question that, to be honest. So, whatever you're drinking this evening, thank you for not telling me what you're drinking. Even though I asked, and I originated that bullshit on, on Periscope. <laughs> Only Craig did. That and Cat did as well now, so thanks. Um, <laughs> but yeah, thanks for tuning into this nonsense. And um, yeah, if you're interested in um, seeing a bit more of this, I'll happily grab on a grab on another free cans from a, a brewery that is maybe slightly overlooked. Um... And give them a um, shine, shine the light on them a little bit, because um, I think it's fun, and I think it's, um, uh, I think some breweries are it, it often overlooked for the more popular stuff, and I think some great stuff out there which is getting pa passing people by. But please, please check these guys out. Thanks for joining me for this um, absolute shit show. I'm probably going to go to bed quite soon, unless Craig and Jake want to lead me astray. Anyway, Rob and Popsy, thanks. And um, as I say, check yourself before you wreck yourself.